Okay, here we go. I'm going to do the walk around tour. It is September the 5th, 2022. I've been here basically since just before the end of March. And uh, here we go. Let's, uh, let's do it. So, this is the driveway, the beautiful row of trees, and that's the, the road coming in with the fence line. I keep the ditches mowed. Okay, there's the other direction. The fencing uh, needs work, and that's just the way it is, and I haven't got around to it just because of everything else going on. Now, this uh, good old McCormick Deering number seven cutter was basically just sitting there and they were just mowing and trimming around it. Now, um, I've put down some landscape fabric and some stones and some, you know, wood that I found, uh, interesting pieces of wood and that kind of thing. And I've started a garden. And as you can see, I around the house, you'll see this later in the video, there is uh, around the, the woodshed and the house, there's a whole bunch of uh, these beautiful flowers, uh, native to uh, Saskatchewan mostly. Uh, they're the, uh, hang on, we, we, what do we got here? The, oh, full inspections. I, it's, uh, yeah, is that a protest? That's Cuddles. Cuddles name, Cuddles named Cuddles because she really doesn't like to be cuddled. It's an oxymoron. Okay, here comes Marky. Yeah, and uh, Marky used to be the one that uh, ran away the most, and now she's the most demanding on attention and scratches and cuddles, which is funny. Here comes Traveler. Okay. Yes, yes, full inspection. Here he comes. That's my little buddy. He's, he's the only male. It's him and me against the world, except for the roosters, which you can hear in the background. Okay. So I've transplanted a bunch of these uh, flowers in places around the yard, and you'll see them. And uh, I've got some uh, anti-deer flower material, which uh, they kind of live, they kind of don't. I don't know where Tin is. Oh, here she comes. I don't know if you can see this. Here she comes, high speed, low drag, coming down the driveway. She'll get here. Um, okay, so again, I've started this uh, garden, and I've put down some uh, lawn grass cuttings. Uh, to cover and, and get things going. As you can see, there's a bunch of poplar that is uh, just growing from the roots of these trees. They do that. Uh, I'm just letting all that happen. It's symbiotic. Here comes, here, here she comes. Here's Tin. And she found something. Okay, and then I found a bunch of these little spruce trees growing around the yard. Uh, little baby spruce trees that... Uh, we're not in good spots, basically, so I moved, I transplanted them. I brought them over. And uh, you'll see this also around the yard. There is uh, there's several pieces of old stuff everywhere. And some of it was in some garden. And I uh, got out some paint and did some fancy stuff. And I've got flowers growing and flowers in pots and decorative. And I transplanted uh, this carragana from the bush, and that's going to turn into... A beautiful little area. Now, I have a couple uh, squash growing here and over there, and I did the uh, chicken wire on the fence, hoping that they would crawl up it, and they just haven't gone. And I, we'll get into this story as things go. Um, basically, there's only a little bit of topsoil here, and. Uh, very little six to eight inches at the most in most places and then it's hard pan hard packed clay and uh, so i have to do all kinds of amendments now um i built this i've showed it before this uh as you can see is an old wheelbarrow that was all rusted out and i i'll show you where i'm using the frame from that wheelbarrow in another place but what i did is i just basically cut out the bottom made this little rock garden this really good, well-built, old wooden toolbox for a truck was just sitting in the bush. It was covered in moss. Um, actually could have just cleaned it up and turned it into a 
again, usable toolbox for a truck, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to do something else with it. Okay, so what I've got is this ground cover here. Okay, now I don't know what the, I don't know what it's called. I don't care. I it's all over the yard. It's in places. I'll show you when we get there. But what I did is I just cut a bunch of it out and brought it here. Built soil underneath. This is all Hugo culture in here too. There's all kinds of wood chips and branches and pieces of wood, and uh, in the bottom of this box and in the bottom of this wheelbarrow. And this, as you see, is a feature. And I've finally got some wildflowers starting. They're finally popping up, which is great. And so I got a sunflower in here, as you can see. And of course, the get away from me deer flowers. Now, I originally planted a blackberry in here, and there it is. It's really dead. It didn't take um, just the way it goes. My intention was I wanted the blackberry to grow and and then root itself and fill up this box and this could be a blackberry box basically so we'll see now um, the sunflower was in another location and so I transplanted it to here uh, to help with the uh, hopefully building the symbiotic root system in the box I should have put more than one but that's that's the way it is but anyways uh, it is growing, it's producing flowers, it's looking great. As you can see, it's suffering, it's not happy because it can't root itself properly. So the roots have to, basically, they've hit the bottom of the box and then they're going, the spike root will have gone somewhere in one direction, not sure where. I should have. That's why I should have put more than one so they could have worked together. And again, I transplanted uh, another one of the flowers from around the house. And uh, then we have this field here, which was a horse pasture. And my intention, what I'd like to do, I'd like to dig a dugout in the middle of this and get the, use the topsoil for topsoil in other places. And I would like to use all the clay around the yard in places, make soil with it, use it for driveways, that kind of thing. And then what I want to do is I want to fill around the uh, trees I've, been, I've started putting the lawn grass around them as I was cutting it from this field and other places and just giving them a cover and some nutrients. So we'll keep going. And uh, sorry for the shaky shaky. So <clears throat> I had a lot of uh, repair to do. Uh, the driveway was full of potholes and ruts and everything else. Um, the uh, prior owners moving out uh, accidentally took out some fence and I just have not got around to fixing it like I said but uh, hey you know we've got some uh, we've got some things happening some of the sunflowers are beginning to do something but again it's really tough for them to 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 really make anything out of this place yet just because of the hard pan underneath but they're working their way through it now that is a cucamelon okay and uh, it's kind of doing okay, kind of not. I made it its own little well. Again, it's not doing much this year, but the tubers are there in the ground. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shield over top of it for the winter. To uh, Basically, I'm going to put a tent over it uh, that can get some light and some warmth and uh, keep the tubers from freezing too much. That's the intention. And then hopefully next year, they will then take off. And then these sunflowers, what I plan on doing is marking each location. Oh man, ants, 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 ants. That's another reason we've had problems growing in here is all the ant hills. Um, but anyways, what, I, what I'm saying is uh, that, you know, they're getting started this year. They're doing their roots the best they can. Next year, I'll put another sunflower in that location and it'll be able to live off those roots and it'll be a head start for the uh, for the plant and it'll be able to root deep, deeper and go, go, go. Now I have this little courtyard thing here and I've started a pond 
and uh, that's the pile of soil and all the because there was a big rock sticking out that I kept hitting with the lawnmower and the people before me were doing the same thing so anyways I dug that rock out and that's the smaller of the two over there and uh, then under, right underneath it was that massive one and uh, wow so anyways I dug the soil out as you can see I've got uh, I've got a big pile of soil and I've thrown long grass on it. Hopefully the long grass is starting to break down the clay. I've been using the clay. That's what the rototiller is for. On the other side of it, I don't feel like going through the fence to show you, but uh, on the other side of it is a pile of soil that I'm building. And I've taken a bunch of the clay and a bunch of the long grass and I keep it wet and I've got it covered in a tarp and I rototill it once a week. I pull the tarp off, I rototill it, spin it, shovel it back in place, water the heck out of it. And it's composting and breaking down and mixing and becoming usable soil that I can use for pots in the greenhouse, etc. The intention is once I get a machine I can dig again, I'm going to finish this pond. And uh, I kind of have to line it with clay because there's actually a lot of, uh, there's actually a lot more topsoil here than in the rest of the yard. So... In places like over there, you can see in the corner where it's white, that's clay and then topsoil on top. That's most of the yard. But you go over on this side over here and it's clay and sand, or it's topsoil and sandy soil clay further down, which is why it's not holding water. Okay? So, again, my intention is build the pond. If I have to line it with plastic, I will. Hopefully, I can line it with clay and have a natural pond because what I want to do. And if you can see in the in the film, I'm sure you can, there's lawn, gra lawn grass that's been cut and it's thrown on top. And I've started to build that up over there because I want to turn this little courtyard area into a small orchard. So, we're 12 minutes into the video. Holy mackerel. And I'm still on the driveway. So, I had a bunch of repairs to do. There used to be a, just, this guy had old cars everywhere. So you'll see indentations, like a low spot there, um, I'm standing in a low spot now. You see places where, you know, the, you can tell that something was not good. Well, that's because this guy had old cars everywhere. So when he sold the place, he took all the old cars out, but the places where they were like that and like over here, um, yeah, the ground's not doing really great. And, uh, I had to fill in ruts. Another reason for digging the ponds that I've dug, the two ponds, was to get clay out and bring it, which I did, as you can see here in places, and start to fill in um, and, and make it so that it's, uh, it's better. And uh, again, I've started a driveway here. So <clears throat> now I, I'm getting all kinds of things going and that'll be in another video. I'm just giving you the rundown now. But uh, there is the greenhouse, which was the, uh, the chicken coop. There's the other chicken tractor behind it with the chickens in it. And uh, there's another project coming. I used my pickup to pull the chicken tractor because I made it kind of heavy and strong. Just look, I, I, I used what I had. That'll be a different video. So again, we got this uh, beautiful yard here, this courtyard. And I'm going to show you that in a second, a little more detail with the trees and everything else. There's the chipper. Remember I told you about the wheelbarrow out front that I, uh, it was rotten, so I cut the bottom of it? Well, it was a steel framed wheelbarrow, and it was really, really heavy steel frame. So as you can see, with a little bit of wood and a pallet, I've created a little trailer for my chipper vacuum. And I did that because these chipper vacuums have basically the same drive as like a snow blower and, you know, things like that. Uh, it's a friction disc drive, basically. They wear out. They die. They go away. They cause nothing but problems. And towing, if I was to tow that behind the tractor by itself, it wouldn't last long. It wouldn't turn worth a darn, yada, yada, yada. So, this is what I did. I can always take this off and drive it on its own, but I have it tied on. I pull it behind the tractor. The hose hooks up to the lawn tractor. And... Um, that's what I bag my grass with. It has the chipper on the side. Okay. It'll, eh, it chips okay. Small stuff. 
still end up with a lot of long pieces and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, that's one piece of machinery and one thing that I did. Uh, here's a nice little garage, all covered in tin, really good. It has a little breezeway on it. So what I have here is, as you can see, uh, this flower was originally in another part of the yard. It's in a pot. I took a really good strong pallet. I put some landscape fabric on it. I, there's all kinds of tires around here. So I took a bunch of them, as you can see, piled them up and planted barley in them. Uh, barley in that one, I had wheat in this one. And uh, what I did is I took a bunch of that clay and topsoil with still, that still had grass on it, that kind of thing, filled up, those, filled up the tires with soil and I mixed in some coffee grounds and some ash and all kinds of stuff like that and some sand. And then I planted the plants in there the barley here and the wheat here and let it grow and the barley is still growing and what that's doing it's filling all of that with root and those roots are using all the stuff in the soil and they're breaking up the clay and they're using all the compostable material as food etc etc and preparing these for other plantings and uh, so the wheat um, got to a certain point because there's not very much there for tires. Wheat and barley, they, uh, their roots go down three, four, five feet. So it got to the point where it couldn't grow roots anymore. It started to suffer. So I cut it off, laid it on top, put some lawn grass on top of that. And now that's all just sitting there waiting for next year. And next year I will be able to put uh, plants and flowers in there and some veggies and have a great little planter for it and it'll be just full of food energy. What I'm doing with these tires, the intention is, uh, again, same thing, but these ones can root more and that's why they have heads on them and they're growing and they're tall and I overseeded it, as you can see, on purpose. I did the same with the other tires because it's, uh, it's just filling all of that with root. And it's using up, what's she having a meal? Are you getting, are you having some barley? Barley grass is apparently good for uh, Cuddles. Cuddles is happy with the grass. Okay, good stuff. Uh, so it's all edible. And uh, so again, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna let this grow and grow and grow until uh, either winter kills it or I can harvest it. And uh, hopefully I can harvest this barley. And uh, then I'm gonna cover it for, and uh, my intention is to put, <laughs> to grow horseradish in there. Uh, I did horseradish in tires a few years ago and it worked like a charm. So that's the intention with those. Now here what I have is this pretty flower holds down the lid. So I cut off the top of the barrel, this plastic barrel. And ta-da, I'm making compost tea. And there's all kinds of things in there. There's, chick there's kitchen scraps, there's cut grass, there's weeds, there's tree bark, there's you name it. And uh, that is really good compost tea and I have been using it. So yeah, there's the little breezeway, the little garage with the breezeway. And uh, there's a good, really good shed. On the ground here are really heavy rubber mats. And uh, it's an area about... Uh, 18 feet by 24 feet and those things are an inch and a half thick and my intention is I want to push that back the shed you see the fence post over there there's an apple tree that I I've been pruning on another little apple tree that needs pruning anyways I want to push that back so it's even with the fence pull all these mats up build a major huge greenhouse in this location once I get some of the other stuff moved out of the way. Uh, I'm going to use those mats as floors in the greenhouses on top of the big huge pallets I have which are going to be floors, the actual frame. And this is going to be the workshop for the greenhouse. That's the intention. So um, again there was a little now I know I didn't do the video. I have pictures of the project but that hitch was on that little trailer frame. You see the steel underneath. And uh, it was just sitting out in the back. I don't know what it was for. I don't know where it came from. 
But uh, as you can see, I got some pallets and some boards and I have made myself a little work trailer that uh, goes behind the tractor. I've got, as you can see, my tools, okay? I have a little toolbox uh, from a kitty litter pail, but I can keep tools in there and keep things dry. And uh, I just lined it with some plastic that was laying around. I made a, uh, I made myself a tailgate and I have a box. I have a lined box that I can now move things around in. Um, this is what I use to move the rototiller from place to place around the yard. I do firewood with it. Uh, I pick up lawn grass with it, I, you know, uh, clumps or weeds or, you know, the, whatever I do, whatever I need to run around with, I have. And my daily watering, I got a really good deal on this tank. And uh, I drive around with the tractor and the trailer and I do my daily watering. Uh, I've done a bunch of cleanup around here. There's a lot of things that were here. A lot of things that were here that, um, that are all going to get used. Like I said, the shed this rubber mat, uh, this engine hoist was supposed to leave. Nobody came and got it yet. So uh, once I can get it moved out of the way, this is gonna be part of the greenhouse. Uh, that work table and uh, all kinds of siding pieces from when they did the house. I haven't moved it yet. Um, I had a party frame up, as you can see, a party tent that I was gonna help turn into a uh, greenhouse and we had a plow wind go through here and I could show you some of the trees that are broke off and are down. And the plow wind completely destroyed that thing. Happiness. Um, I've been collecting pallets, as you can see, and other things. So yeah, so I've got a uh, 40 by 40 shop. Um, he left me this propane tank, which he converted to an air tank. And uh, he took it out of the shop off the frame he had it on and put it there. So I haven't got around to uh, putting it back. <laughs> it's too heavy to lift by hand. But anyway, um, I didn't show you everything. As I was cutting all this grass in this area over here where, all, where you see all these tires and everything. All the tires that were piled up and oh man, it was a mess. Anyway, I uh, found a whole bunch of stuff in the... Uh, in the grass and I I've piled it up and that's the barbecue got a, another tractor off a neighbor it just needs a battery and a tune-up and the tires pumped up and I'll have a second lawn tractor I took the deck off it because that's just gonna tow things around my intention is that's gonna go on the trailer that I have the other tractor on now that I just showed you and uh, yeah so again uh, there's a tow hitch for heavy equipment. There is a steel frame on caster wheels and uh, I'll use it for something. That steel barrel is probably going to become a wood stove or a wood gasification unit. I'm not sure yet. Oh, I've made another ladder. There's the first ladder that I made and I needed a smaller ladder that was easy to get around and uh, so I did that. And I know, yeah, I could be doing a better job on this video, I know. But anyway, there we go. So now I have a little step ladder that I can run around. It's, uh, it's only seven feet tall, so I can actually take it in the house and get up into the attic and yada yada. There's the Jeep, the Black Rhino. Needs transfer case. And a few other things. Uh, my trailer, remote trailer, the house. And I started some planters, and I've got carrots growing. I had some radishes. had a good crop of radishes in there. Oh, the tiger lilies. Okay, so here's the woodshed. And there's some of the tiger lilies growing. And there's tiger lilies along there. That whole wall was covered in tiger lilies. So the ones that you see that are transplanted around the yard that I showed you, that's where they came from. And uh, I tore that corner out over there. I, uh, I have a project planned for that that I haven't done yet. And then um, the other thing is I didn't like to be reaching over the tiger lilies to get to the water tap, to the spigot. I didn't like that. So as you can see, uh, by finding a bunch of big and flat rocks and etc. around the yard, I have 
made myself a nice little spot and decorated it with, uh, again, I could do a video on just the old stuff that I found around the place that I have been uh, repurposing. <laughs> okay, so here's the original greenhouse that was with the place. And uh, there's a, <laughs> a wheelbarrow with a tarp and a pallet on it. And inside that wheelbarrow is composting grass. Green grass, composting. And what I'm doing is I'm making soil that I can use for pots. This is where I make my potting mix. And uh, I take that green grass and wood chips and the clay and topsoil and cuttings and all kinds of other stuff and I mix it all together and I make my potting soils. Okay, so then uh, there was some old panels around and there was a whole bunch of bed frames around this place, all over the place. They were everywhere. And uh, so they've been repurposed for decoration and raised bed. I've got a cucumber growing. Uh, those are some old tires that were flipped inside, cut and flipped inside out and turned into planters. And uh, I had a crop of uh, red cabbage in there that, weren't, that worked out really good. Um, and I had potatoes in bags. Those, those are all redone now. And uh, I am, this is going to be a raised bed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the ends. I'm going to move those tires out and fill in the ends and, uh, and fill this with soil and huga culture and turn it into a raised bed on the side of the greenhouse. And uh, I've got grass growing here around the solar trailer. And uh, that is the little playhouse that was turned into a cat house that the cats don't like. But it'll get repurposed into a... Uh, a chicken tractor for next year. Anyways, I'm letting this grass grow on purpose. And the reason I'm doing that, letting it grow tall, is um, it's rooting down further. Now that it's tall grass, that means it has deep roots. So I'm letting this area turn into uh, better soil underneath, further down. And then what I'm gonna do is move everything out of there. I am going to put logs around it and uh, turn it into a garden for next year and so again uh, it's um, it's rooting down nice and deep getting deeper roots than it had before when it was just lawn and uh, I'm going to again use some of the clay that I'm pulling out of the ground and the compost I'm making and all the grass that gets cut all this tall grass same thing so uh, I, re I transplanted some rhubarb and put in. That's another garden. I've got, uh, I've dug some holes. So I've got one there, one there, and one over there. Um, I dug down about three feet with the rototiller. And uh, I've uh, filled it up with the, the soil that I rototilled down into that hard packed clay that couldn't be done anything with, right? So the topsoil that was on top, other things that I put in, lawn grass that was cut, uh, there's wood chips in there, etc., etc., and a dead animal. Um, we'll get into that story later. I, my chickens were attacked and we lost a bunch of them. And some of them were not uh, taken away by the attackers. And uh, so a couple of those bodies, it could, there was nothing left to, it wasn't like I was going to be able to butcher them. They were ripped apart pretty bad. So uh, they're in the bottom and that is a tree well. And that is ready for next year to bring in. I'm going to buy fruit trees. I haven't decided what yet, but uh, yeah, that's going to be a tree well. And uh, I made that feature in the corner. There's all kinds of uh, the bottoms of round bins. They're all over the place around this yard. And so uh, I have uh, tried to start using them where I can. And that's one feature. I cut it and uh, as you can see, made it go around the corner and put the tires in place and uh, got the long grass down. As you can see, there's a stone that was here, yada, yada. Another piece of old wheelbarrow, some snowmobile tracks. <laughs> 
and uh, so that'll be a feature garden for next year. What I plan on doing is this whole area here. Uh, again, I think there was old vehicles parked here, to be honest. And uh, we've got some clover and other stuff going on, so that's great. And again, I put the tree well here. Got the rhubarb there. I've got a tree well there beside the little garden shed I'm going to show you in a second. Um, my plan is I want to turn this into a garden. So let's just continue on. And uh, the old garden, this little garden shed, I was going to turn it into a chicken coop. But uh, now I'm just going to keep it the way it is. I'm not going in there. It's a pretty cool setup. It's got some shelving and that kind of thing. This was the garden. And when I, once the snow is gone and I got a look at it and look at it, it was a mess. And uh, so I just, I just let it do its thing. I just let nature take over. And uh, I'm going to knock down all those weeds. It, there's a few thistle in there too, you know, but uh, some quack grass and other, other things. But I'm just going to knock those down and uh, plan on covering it with, uh, I'm gonna be talking to some local farmers and getting some grain bags, the, the big grain bags that they use, or sometimes they cover round bales in them. But uh, hopefully I can get a bunch of that for free. I was gonna use cardboard, I started to use cardboard, but I think the best thing to do, because there is some thistles, like I said, stuff like that, I'm going to, uh, I'm just gonna cover it in plastic and leave it for a year. Um, these weeds have grown, they've grown tall, they've, they've worked their way down into the soil, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna cover it, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cover it in the spring. I'm gonna let it, uh, let the snow hit it and, and seep in and everything. Like I said, I'll cut all this down, let it lay on top, and then deal with it. Um, I've got another barrel going with compost tea. Uh, this lets the light in, that creates a, uh, a different type of, uh, of uh, microbes. Actually, the microbes don't really form. It still rots down. Um, that's another video. Um, I did have some lettuce growing on top in the planters. Uh, the lettuce has been harvested and the, plant, uh, the planters are just there just to hold the lid down. But the, this compost tea is a different thing and I'll get into that in a different video. So again, another tree well. Marky is coming to say hello and uh, check things out. And I have potatoes growing in five gallon pails, one grain bag, and a bunch of planters. Uh, the planters, I'm going to uh, hopefully, because they're a lot smaller, right? So it'll be baby potatoes. The other thing too, at this time of year, I'm gonna be able to take all of these and put them inside. If I have to keep them in the garage or in the house or in the greenhouse or whatever uh, and let the potatoes keep growing, that's what I'll do. So I've got the got the potatoes started and uh, they are, again, uh, I just did this the other day. So the, they're gonna, they're gonna go, once I have plants uh, showing up, once the, they start to leaf out and everything, then I will uh, do another little top dressing and then some mulch and like I said if uh, if I have to they can go inside and then this is going to be um, sort of a half raised bed one of the chickens that got killed was a lavender color gorgeous chicken and I named her lavender <laughs> and uh, that's she's down in the bottom and uh, so again, what I plan on doing, right underneath the potatoes is where the tree well is. And I plan on putting in some kind of a fruit tree. And then the rest of the area out front here is going to be, I'm gonna grow lavender. Anyway, okay. So uh, this raised bed was here and uh, I had some of this uh, fencing material with the stakes uh, around. And so another bed frame. And uh, so again, I've got the barley growing and uh, I've got some Brussels sprouts here and some turnips and 
they uh, in the last couple of weeks they've just been decimated as you can see and uh, I've been spraying with the with the vinegar solution I've been spraying with the um, peppermint solution and all kinds of stuff I don't have Nemo happiness stuff but uh, anyway the the bugs came in and uh, had lunch um, so hopefully I'll get something out of it, but we'll see. Anyway, I got the barley going. Again, these beds were just used up, mostly. The, the soil where the Brussels sprouts is, I brought in. I tore, pulled all the soil out, I brought in new soil. And then what I did over here was I put the new soil, I put the, the soil in the front half in the back. I was growing peas and beans, and the peas and beans, uh, there's one bean left, and that's, how big it was when I transplanted it and the, the peas all died most of the beans died and uh, so it's got to be the soil and um, so uh, that's again I've got carrots the carrots are kind of coming and a couple of the turnips and radishes but uh, again it's just the the soil is just not doing its thing so what I did was I I brought the ball the barley in and uh, I'm letting the weeds grow too. The dandelions are doing their job. And I've got the barley in there. And um, that is growing down and rooting down deep and creating better soil um, for next year. So what I'm gonna, I've, I've got the landscape fabric in this corner. There is actually some flowers in there where you can see the the dandelion and the crack grass coming out. Um, hopefully there's some tulips and some uh, poppies uh, that will come up for next year and kind of have a nice little flower at the end. I did the same thing at the other end but it didn't uh, take so we'll we'll play with it. Um, this guy here, this little sandbox was, uh, was in the yard. Um, so again next year that's going to be a herb garden. That's in place. At the dump, somebody threw another one away. There it is. So I've got two of them. So for next year, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is this guy here is going to go down at that end, where the cardboard is at the end there. And it'll bookend this bed. And uh, I'm going to grow herbs in there. And the propane tank. And my, my little garden here, Look, uh, there's a couple spaces, so over there where the potatoes are, and right here, there was dead spots in the ground in kind of an oval shape. And then there was a perfect circle around them, about a 12-foot circle. Now, they left me a swimming pool. It's, it's in that shed. In a, in a, it's one of those pop-up swimming pools. You, uh, you fill the ring with air, and uh, then you fill the pool with water and it holds itself up. Anyway... I'm thinking that's where they had the pool. A couple of swimming pools. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways. Um, I, uh, I threw some, uh, some soil on top. And some lawn grass. And I threw in some seeds. And I'm keeping the celery and the uh, tomatoes in the pots. I had some other tomatoes. I had, some, I had a bunch of things growing in pots in here. At first this was a little pot garden with the, uh, the other plants around the edge. Um, I had a pretty good crop of uh, beets, and that's the last one, and that will get eaten right away. Uh, but the squash are taking off, doing great. I've got, uh, I've got butternut squash, and I have spaghetti squash in here. And as you can see, they are uh, they're taking off. Also, there's rhubarb. So the plan for this is uh, they are taking advantage of this spot. The, they're rooting down. They're growing. I'm gonna and again, it's it's winter squash, so they're they're cold hardy, and I'll just let them go as long as I can. I'll get what I can off them. The tomatoes, if it start if we start to get uh, a danger of frost or anything like that, because they're in pots, I can just pick those up, and and same with the celery, I can just run them into the greenhouse, which is right there and protect them from the frost so and then next year again um, what I'm gonna do is sort of a half raised bed 
So where the rhubarb is, this end of the bed here, okay, um, I'm hoping that that rhubarb will just take over that whole side. And then I'm going to do a little semicircle back here, uh, raised bed, and have other plants in it. So we'll see. That's the, that's the plan with that. Okay, so heading around. Uh, I've got a herb growing over top of the septic. <laughs> just I, I, Okay, yes, the lawn is a mess right now. Um, I haven't mowed. Um, the, most of the lawn quit growing. Okay, and so we've got a, little, a few spots here where it's uh, okay. It's it's taking off. What I plan on doing is uh, again, I'm I'm letting this grow tall, and hopefully it rooting it's rooting down a little deeper. And uh, I want to do a little garden here for next year. Uh, so I've got some uh, got some peppers. And onions, cilantro, another pepper that uh, didn't make it, and now he's trying to make it. Some fennel and an onion. Uh, and uh, more peppers, which I'm actually getting some peppers now. Onions, fennel, and more peppers. I got these peppers at a market this year, and they were already growing. They already had peppers on them. And so I thought, right on. And... Um, I got, I took the peppers off and they just went dormant. Like, so I kept them alive all summer and now they're producing peppers. We've had some really hot weather. So yeah, um, we got more of these planters and as you can see, I had to put some chicken wire around them. These two, the, uh, the chickens ate my garlic and a bunch of the other herbs that were growing in here. Uh, so I put the chicken wire around, but nothing came back. So I've just been letting them, uh, some of the herbs are growing. Yeah. And of course weeds started to pop up, but you know what? I'm just letting it happen because, um, oh, I made some feature boxes. I've got some, uh, service berry and some, uh, the ground cover and some, uh, um, what are they called? Alberta rose, uh, wild rose, uh, provincial rose of Alberta. I got two of these boxes. So the, the the service berries and the wild rose have rooted themselves in here, along with the uh, the ground cover, and you can see it starting to grow out the sides and and grow over the sides. And uh, there's other things in there. There's clover. There's wildflowers. So yay! And then these boxes again with some herbs and things, and um, Tried to make a little featured gardens, but um, they're not doing too well. But here's why I'm letting them go, is because they're full of earthworms. So they right now are filling up with castings. So I'll be able to take all these boxes that you see, that this style of box that I have, there's a couple more coming up. And um, I will be able to um, mix those into the soil I'm making for the pots and it'll be full of castings. So I've got the woodshed, got a hanging plant. Again, uh, this little steel table, um, that little steel table, <laughs> I mean, the, the guy, the guy left me with a lot of really old, cool stuff that I've been making use out of. Uh, he left me with this uh, lawnmower and the engine was seized. So yank the engine off and put a planter on top. There you go. Neat. Um, we are shielded from the best we can from the smart meter. And um, I got a bunch of uh, tree trimming I've been doing and all those branches are getting cut up. A lot of it is from these uh, crab apple trees that I pruned. And I've been using it in the fire pit to do, uh, to do smoking with uh, in the fire pit. Works really good. Um, and then, uh, this tree is suffering and, uh, so I'm doing my best to bring it back. This is where the playhouse was and the sandbox where the rocks and the, uh, the planters and the stand is. And so we just covered it in cardboard and put some things down and, uh, put that uh, old bed frame stand up with chicken wire on it. The cucamelons are finally growing up there. I had squash in the other planter and it died. 
Uh, again, my Brussels sprout got hit, but there's Brussels sprouts coming. Uh, some tiger lilies, some other flowers. And again, I'm just letting, if the weeds want to come, I'm just letting them come. Uh, that's what weeds do, they, they rebuild your soil. So I've got some uh, onions growing in there, as you can see. Those are green onions from the store, like organic green onions. And uh, I, uh, yeah. So what I'm, you know, I, I've been just pulling pieces off, letting them grow and just uh, pulling the, the green onion off and using it to cook with. Uh, so anyways, like I said, uh, just got some cardboard down and some rocks and uh, I planned on covering this whole thing in wood chips, but what I'm doing, like I said, I let the grass grow, let it grow tall and uh, get down in between the roots of that tree and they all work together. And hopefully it's helping that tree out. I had a ring of sunflowers around here. All the way from here, all the way around, was sunflowers planted. And most of them died. Oh, Marky has made another kill. It's a mouse. Good. Good girl. Oh, it's still alive. There's a game on. Yep, that's what, that's what they do. Okay, so uh, anyways, um, only two sur sunflowers survived. And, uh, you know, they're pretty small, they're, they're not doing great, but hey, they're, they're still doing their thing. So, and again, there was all kinds of really cool old ornamental stuff around. And uh, most of it was in the other garden over there, which I will take and show you. So I pulled this wheel and this old plow out of there and uh, brought it over here. And uh, I guess you can see I got the copper paint out. And uh, this little ornamental log thing's pretty cool. And anyway, there it is. It's, uh, it's kind of neat. What I want to do next year, I want to I wanna pull that with something and, and try, try it out. <laughs> I'll bet you it still works. Uh, there's a little, uh, again, there's all kinds of beautiful trees in this courtyard and crab apples. And the crab apples are doing good. Um, I only pruned up two trees, and so the rest of these crab apples, I uh, I didn't do a summer pruning yet. I might we got warm weather, more warm weather coming, and so I might do a summer pruning on all these coming up. Um, there used to be a really beautiful little garden in there, and. Um, there's stones in there and other little ornament pieces. I pulled the ornament pieces out. And the that birch is cool. But the problem is that birch is dead. Um, you can see the the woodpeckers have just gone after it. It's it's done. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just letting it have its last its last year, its last life, and again, uh, like I said, there's there's stones. This used this used to be probably a really cool little garden. There's all kinds of wildflowers in there that came up at different times of the year. Uh, there's one of them there. Okay, so my plan is uh, I'm just letting this birch have its last year, and look at all the cool turns. Look at all the cool twists in there. So that is really, really neat. Okay, so what I plan on doing is uh, I'm going to cut this down this winter and I'm going to peel it. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to leave it in one piece, the whole thing, and I'm going to completely peel the bark off. And... Uh, and then I'm going to varnish it and uh, use it somewhere for an ornament because I, I think it's cool. I might even put it right back there again. I, th I can't leave it in the ground. Um, if you know anything about birch trees, if you leave them in the ground uh, or standing and have, you know, with their, they'll just rot. They rot quick. So what I, like I said, uh, I'm going to cut it off and peel it and I might put it back there. I might, uh, we'll see, but it's pretty cool. But that's gonna be a feature garden in the corner again. 
And again, uh, we've got more feature garden. This rock garden was here when I moved in. Um, this, uh, this area here, I have some hascap planted. I have one here. The Aurora hascap is there and the Borealis is over on that side of the garden. And I've been putting down some long grass. Again, I plan on uh, doing a little bit of a raised bed in here next year. And uh, so again, like I said, there's, there's, there's cool little pieces. Uh, they had this just filled up with old steel that I have, as you can see, like uh, the little windmill out at the front and and the uh, the plow I just showed you in the other wheel. Uh, so some things I left in place and some things I moved. And I made, uh, that was just a cut off barrel that was uh, laying out in the back. So I, uh, I cleaned it up and I got the paint out and I... Uh, I had some peas growing in there along with the Brussels sprouts and the peas died. The Brussels sprouts, well, they are what they are, but and they got hit just like everything else. But uh, you know the thing is their roots are in there. The pea, the roots from the peas are in there. And uh, next year I'll be able to replant in there and, um, and keep going. Um, we got some flowers, I uh, got some other stuff. That was a pepper and it died, so same thing. I'm just letting the weeds take over. This pepper hasn't decided if it's gonna die yet or not. Um, so, then we've got uh, a row of Saskatoon bushes. There's four of them. And then a cherry tree. And uh, that is a Canada red cherry. And they're tiny little red cherries and they're a little bit, they're not a sweet, super sweet cherry. They're kind of sour, but they're good. And uh, me and the birds have been having a, a real go around with that. So that will get the, uh, the fall prune and then the spring prune. I'll clean that up. And I hope, uh, I've saved a bunch of the seeds. I'm hoping to propagate. Um, anyways, what I've done is I put the long grass down. And uh, again, I'm letting the grass grow where it's growing and the weeds and everything and and rooting down into the ground and uh hey cuddles yes we have to we have to see what's going on and i have the borealis hascap there so what i'm doing is i'm uh, there's other saskatoon bushes just naturally propagating themselves see okay they're coming out because this isn't getting mowed he was running through here with the mower okay and uh, so I'm not doing that. I, I've got the grass down. So it's killing some of the long grass underneath. Others like dandelions and long grass and quack grass are growing, but their, their roots are going deeper. And uh, the plan is for next year, and I'm letting the long grass grow a little higher in the back as well. I'm not mowing it anymore. And uh, the plan for next year is that's all going to be a bed right up to the fence. And uh, well, I got some sunflowers finally coming. I got a row of them in here. And again, they're, they're doing okay. And uh, next year what I want to do... Oh, we got a bee. Hey buddy, how you doing? Doing your job. That's good. Thank you. Make my sunflowers happy. So all of this behind this tree, I'm not going to come back here with the mower anymore. I come back to water, but I don't mow. Anyways, all of this, I want to cover this whole area all the way and uh, to that cherry tree with wood chips and leaf mulch. And... Uh, and then once I have the wood chips and the leaf mulch and covered the whole area, right? Then what I want to do is uh, next year, then I want to, uh, I'm going to do all sunflowers back there. The whole thing is going to be sunflowers for the first year. And then I'll do something else in between the Saskatoons and the cherry tree. And I'll just let the, uh, the system work for itself and uh, the root systems all work together. And uh, yeah, so then we've got this swing set. And um, again, I have uh, plans for the swing set. 
<laughs> and uh, there's uh, more planters. I had some bok choy in there. And these are choy some, and they've gone to seed, and I'm collecting the seeds and some flowers. And again, uh, there's some weeds growing in there on purpose, and this full of worms. It's worm castings. This is these boxes are just going to be full of worm castings, and uh, I've got some cilantro here, and I have a row over there. So we cleaned out, friend, uh, uh, cleaned out the weeds that was. Uh, that raised bed was just completely weeded in like the garden over there. And uh, so that got, uh, that got cleaned out. And those weeds are now um, actually in the compost uh, pile. And I've got some herbs going. And some of the herbs are taking off and doing well. And uh, some aren't doing so good, but uh, things are, you know, they're growing. They're, that's only about a month and a half that I did that, so they're doing okay. And again, this garden, there's the little shed over there. Uh, there's a raspberry patch, and uh, again, it was just unruly, and so I left it. Um, and again, what I plan on doing is I'm going to pull all the posts out. They were using old uh, <laughs> mud flaps off trucks uh, to try and keep the weeds down. So I've been pulling those out. And uh, what, I th what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. Uh, the, they're no longer making berries, these raspberries. They're starting to go dormant. Once they're completely dormant, I'm going to come in and pull them out. And I'm going to pull out the posts. And I'm just going to cover this whole area. Like I said, I'm going to knock everything down. And, and cover it and leave it and uh, and let all those roots uh, just uh, turn the whole thing into soil again and a, and a usable garden and then we'll figure out what we're going to do with it and so yeah semi covered deck covered in plastic and he uh, I asked him to leave the plastic on uh, again I transplanted another flower uh, that little semicircle bed was there, but it was just weeds. So uh, again, I put the uh, the lawn grass in there, and the cats are using it for their uh, toilet. Um, and uh, again, next year I'll be able to to have a really nice little feature garden there. The fire pit. Um, I'll have to redo the bricks around it next year. This was just done in a couple hours. Remote was over and some other people are over and this on the far side of the yard by the fence where I showed you where all those semicircles were the bottoms for the old uh, grain bins that I cut one up and put it in the corner with the tires where the rhubarb is that's where the fire pit was and uh, I th we all thought that hey that fire pit should be here in this beautiful courtyard right so you can come out of the house and uh, and enjoy this so we moved it and uh, it was it was done in a hurry. It wasn't. I didn't spend a whole lot of time leveling or anything else. Wasn't worried about it. We're getting some use out of it. And as you can see, the weeds are taking over. Um, what I plan on doing is in the spring, I'm gonna pull the the bricks around the outside out, and uh, I'm gonna get some more bricks and make a better pad and. Uh, but hey, for now, we're, we're still getting use out of it. So there we go. There's an hour out of your life you'll never get back. And that's not everything. But it gives you a little rundown of uh, what I've been doing. And uh, hang on a second here. There. <laughs> okay. So... It's, uh, yes, I've got the hunting, uh, hunting season beard is started again. Um, it's kind of a rundown of what I've been doing. And, uh, yes, things have been happening. I just haven't been making videos or doing live streams or anything else. But, uh, this is why. Um, there's stuff getting done. And so I don't have time for videos or live streams. Because uh, I'm working. 